the guy I caught the chain with puts this hit on me. Like they want to try and try and stab me, right? So it goes around to the other key holders. The fucking guy next to me was a key holder for the for the bloods. He's a black guy. Because I kicked that cord over to him, he hit me up through the cell. He's like, hey, he says, is your name Beanie? And I was like, fuck, right? <laughs> I look, go back over the, to, the, to the vent, right? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, like, and he goes, he goes, oh, good. And I'm like, oh, good. What the fuck does this mean, right? And I'm like, I'm like, hey, I said, uh, I said, what if it was? And he goes, well, is it or not, fucker? I go, I go, well, it's not Beanie. I go, it's Beanie. And he goes, it's the same shit. I go, I go okay, bro. He's like, hey, I'm going to let you know. They're going to pop this door and they're coming for you. And I was like, really? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, they're going to come and get you when this door pops. You're going to pop this door and you're going to go to shower and they're going to send some guys to come and get you. Oof. My other Sully, he knows already. He didn't tell me. In order for that to go down, they have to tell your Sully so your Sully can stay out of the fucking way. Oh, wow. So he knows about it. He's known about it. And now he tells me through the wall, and now I know he knows about it. You know what I mean? And I'm living in this room with this guy. So door pops. My Sully takes off running out of the cell. So I just, po- <laughs> I just posted up at the back of the cell just waiting, you know, and sure as shit, two guys come flying in. One guy flying in, try to stab me. And then we're fucking scrapping, rapping all over the place. Fall out of the cell. We're up the stairs. Fucking push the guy down the stairs. We fall down the stairs. I'm tired as fuck. Like, fighting two guys. I'm tired. I'm lumped up a little bit. And I look over this way, and I'm barely breathing. Look over this way, and all the fucking cops just watching. They're just watching. Oh, my God. So this other guy come over, he's kicking, kicking, kicking. I grab the other guy, drag him on top of me, and I'm just choking him, you know, and, like, trying to use him to deflect this guy from, from getting at me. Right. And then realize this guy's out. He's not even awake. Push him off me, and now it's just me and this guy and everybody in the cells watching and all the cops watching. So let's tear this fucking guy's ass up. We leave, and this guy never got up. The guy was choking. Never got up. Just eyes full of blood, right? So they send me to another cell block. I go in there, there for a couple of days. Guard comes in. We're going to move you to, to the gymnasium. So you move me to the gymnasium. So now I'm out of the cell block. I'm in a gym with 300 guys. I can walk around. I get yard access, all this stuff, right? And the cop says, I really appreciate what you did for us out there. The gentleman that shared that story is an amateur MMA fighter, so that's probably why he fared so well um, during his time behind bars. And actually, the guy that he choked out with the red eyes, that guy didn't make it. But it was deemed to be a self-defense. So, you know, because obviously if, if it had been deemed otherwise, the guy would still be in prison. But, you know, California jail is insane. You know, it's really run by prisoners. And I think that the big worry, like he mentioned in the video, is that you catch another charge. I spent a little time in Los Angeles, unfortunately, when I was younger in the system. Didn't go to prison or anything, but just county over there is run by gangs. And it's absolutely insane. You don't have the option, really, not to join a gang when you go in. And, you know, then you you know, somebody's like, hey, hide this shank, hide this, that, whatever. And then you get clobbered, you know. So you have to play the game. Uh, I've I really never imagined that you know something like that could be run by the prisoners, but it's a very delicate balance. And those people, those corrections officers, they're not getting paid enough. They are not getting paid enough. And a lot of the those guys, they're not. People have to say, yeah, they're so morally and ethically above everybody else. It's like no, these kids, a lot of young kids, they get involved into corrections out there in California because they have a need that supersedes you know the demand. I mean, supersedes you know the available bodies to put in there so they're always short staffed and it's just insane so anyway the point is do not get involved in california now also they got the three strikes out there still so that means that if you commit a felony all you got to do is commit two other felonies 
and you're done. You get life no matter what the charge. There's people in prison in California for life over three drug charges. Also, if you have one felony, the second's easier. Then the third felony could be you driving without your license. But because you already got two strikes, you get hit. I don't know. I really, you know, it drives me crazy, the criminal justice system. I could go on this forever. I think the biggest thing that aggravates me is that we do not give people the opportunity to go to trial. You are, you're kind of blackmailed not to go to court, to trial, because when you get arrested, they tell you, hey, listen, here's a deal. Well, first they let you marinate in jail for, for four weeks or so, like a month. Then they come with a deal, be like, hey, we'll let you out today. You take this deal, you get probation, catch this and that, and you can leave. And then you're like, well, I, I'm innocent. You know, I want to take it to court. It's like, okay, we can take it to court. We do a speedy trial, but if you're found guilty in the trial, you get the max. And you're like, my school says, sometimes the max are, are figures that you're like, oh, like possible five to 10 years, or I just walk away with probation. Or well, what are you going to choose? They find that like the majority of cases that go to trial are actually found not, not guilty, but only like 20% of cases ever go to trial. So 80 something percent of cases are settled before ever going to trial. And it's not because of lack of evidence, because a number of those cases would be dropped. Like if you said, Hey, I'm going to take it to trial. DA might relook at the case and be like, we're not going to be able to win and they might drop it. So what does this help? It hurts the underprivileged. The people can't afford attorneys. And so you have this cycle of people that are in jail that really don't deserve to be, you know, it's just a machine is what I'm saying. And I don't think everybody's getting a fair shake and it's very annoying. I think everybody should have the right to go to trial and you shouldn't be threatened to say, Hey, okay, you can have a jury trial, but if you're guilty, you get the max. I'm like, that makes no goddamn sense. Why are you saying that? You know? Doesn't make any sense. Anyway, it pissed me off. I could go about this stuff forever. But anyway, that was an incredible story. I just want to share with you guys. Thank you guys for watching. As always, buy red and sell green.